Oh, I thought we said like like five feet off the fence, and that's kind of like what uh, I know. Yeah, no. Like, all right, guys, I messed up, I miscommunicated. All right, welcome back to this build series. This is Tim O'Dell. This is part four of a large build series. If you have not seen the previous videos, I recommend go back and check those out so you can be caught up and up to date on everything that we have been doing on this project. Mainly what we're gonna be focusing on in this video is pouring the concrete in this upper section of the backyard. It's gonna be a sand wash finish. But what I'm mainly going to be doing right now is I'm just going to be setting up forms for the concrete patio in this upper section with one of my guys, uh, Jimmy. And then I'm also just going to be going over uh, how to do it with him. So I want to get square off the house, right? To set my form in. My form is going to be back here. Three foot off the pool. Where, how are we going to get square off of this? How would you get square off this house? And I can't really, it's very difficult to square something off of something so far away, right? I'm gonna tell you two ways of how to do it too. But first I just wanna test your knowledge. See how well you've been paying attention. Is this string line? That's factor A. What else do you think you need to do to make sure that you're square with the house? Um, oh, the whatchamacallit theorem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one another way. So basically they wanted a three foot walkway right here, right? At least minimum. Three foot walk right here, minimum, right? Oh, right here. But I wanted to make sure that I'm square with the house when I put my form in. What would you do? You want to make sure this line, like you're going to put a is, form here? Yeah, I want to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to put a form here. I want to be parallel with the house, which means square and in line with it. Measure. Measure where? That side and then that side, the corner. Exactly. Yeah. That's the easiest way. Yeah. Also, you can verify it by doing the Pythagorean theorem too. So, let's first check our square and make sure we're on the money. I got the big Milwaukee level, or Milwaukee. Remember, okay. put it, this on the house, okay? And that's uh, that's the beginning of the tape. That makes sense, though, right, Jimmy? Yeah. It's like if you don't do it all the time, you forget. All right, so I got 31 feet, 10 inches, and a half. That's what I'm at. All right, let's go down to that corner of the house. Yeah, too much, too much. Right there, yeah. Yeah, this one's exact. 31, 10 inches and a half. So, the string line is perfectly square. The only problem with it is, take a guess, what's wrong with the string line right now, Jimmy? Bingo, stud, dude. So you can see right there, I was just going over some basic forming knowledge with one of my guys, Jimmy, just so in the future he can have this kind of stuff down and I won't have to always do all the forming or setup or anything like that. I can trust that my guys will know how to do this on their own. I think it's very important to spend time just training your guys, almost like pop quizzing them, making sure that they are uh, understanding the process of the whole build. Unfortunately though, I wish the homeowner came out and gave me a little pop quiz on the side form that I just finished putting in the whole way down uh, because I put it in the wrong place and uh, had, to, had to redo it. Yeah, the uh, only other thing, I want to just double check on the fence over here about like how exactly what to do with it. That's what I wanted to talk to you about too. I cause like I was gonna put this form in right here but I kind of wanted to get your opinion. So actually, uh, like I mentioned, I wanted the form to go here. Oh, there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because I, when you came over the last time, we mentioned like trying to move it out here. Yeah, I thought, well, I thought we said like like five feet off the fence and that's kind of like what uh, I- No, yeah, no. Like, so right away after he told me that he wanted to push back, the first thing I was thinking was, damn, that's a lot of dirt I got to remove now. 
but you know of course we're gonna get this right and make sure the homeowner is happy yeah that, that's why this was here as like sort of a marker oh serve as a marker for that oh man okay mm. i don't know if you want to all right well we'll just have to move a lot of dirt Honestly, right. like, it doesn't have to be exactly right up in here but like you know within, within a few inches of it or you know within half a foot here okay so basically if i just kind of go off this line like two and a half feet about to here yeah but, just like that yeah even yeah yeah basically between two and two and a half feet yeah. okay yeah okay darn it okay man i definitely miscommunicated with you on that one all right guys i messed up miscommunicated i guess we're moving the form back two and a half feet well really yep okay Wait, so, we have so, so all this dirt needs to be taken out. Yeah. Two and a half feet the whole way? Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Uh, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah, the whole way. Oh, shit. So after breaking the needs with the guys, it was unanimous. We all decided to just pack it up for the day. It was close to the end of the day, but after hearing some news like that, might as well just pack it up, start over the next day, and come back with a better mindset. So once we finally got that form in place and where it needed to be, we were finally able to move on to setting up the drains. And these drains were in specific locations for the outside of the concrete patio and all the way around the pool. In, uh, like I said, specific locations so that it can capture all the, the water runoff easily and divided evenly. So now that all the drains are in, the last thing we're going to be doing is do, touching up a little couple of forms around the pool equipment. And then also, of course, we're going to be compacting the soil and adding our rebar on two foot centers. Man. I left that guy alone for 10 minutes. And he somehow pulled the compactor string off ripped it right off so now i gotta open this thing up and hopefully repair it i think i might need a smaller maybe hold on i might be able to get this oh, i got it i got it if you guys ever have this problem on site we're about to go through it together learn a little bit together how to fix this problem. Oh, 
hopefully it's not too big of an issue and I can get this thing fixed really easily. I really don't want to spend my day repairing machinery on the site. Not a good way to spend the day. Let's find where it ripped. Ah, there it is. Okay. Might be an easy fix. Now, looks like it's gonna put a little knot in it. I think I'm gonna put it back together with some string. So I wouldn't say that was the best compactor fix for the being able to start the motor, but I just used some string line line around and uh, tied those two pieces together and it works. It's MacGyvered, but at least uh, I can get that compactor up and running so that I can compact the soil and set some rebar today. Did not want to be spending the day fixing a compactor. I definitely did not want to hand tamp all of the soil. So after we got the compactor run up and running, we compacted all of the soil. And now we're just setting all of our rebar on two foot centers. Alright, here we are on the pour day. About to pour this out. It's about 15 yards back here. Got drains. Got the concrete finishers here. Rebar grid. We're gonna be doing a sand wash finish today. So it should be a nice decorative finish. Come back tomorrow, wash it all off. Concrete should be arriving any minute. Got the pumper here. I actually got my brother here, Tyler. Yeah. Oh, there's the concrete speak of the devil. There they are. So the concrete has arrived and we're getting ready to start pumping this job out. We're going to be pumping a 3000 PSI mix with a pea gravel. And uh, I got three finishers out here today, including my brother Tyler, uh, Juan, and two of his guys. If you actually go back in part three, um, you know, I had Juan and the guy that's bull floating right now, Miguel, finishing. So you have, if you haven't seen part three, highly recommend going back and checking out that video so you're up to date on the whole process of this backyard remodel build. So right now we have the whole job all poured out. 
one thing I'm doing right now is I'm just going down on the little retaining wall that we built, cleaning up the edges, giving uh, the edges uh, a little bit of a float and edge. I want to make sure that from the wall to the concrete it's a very smooth transition because we will be adding steps later on to this job and I want a nice uh, smooth step up. So I went down the whole edge giving it a nice edge and then I was also sponging the top of that center block because I don't want concrete to stain. Here we are with our looks like a 16 inch wide walking edger edging the back side of the pool just waiting for this concrete to stiffen up a little more before we start to really get out there I'm going around the whole pool giving it an edge smoothing out the edges as well while also sponging the pool coping because I want the least amount of cleanup to do the next day. And then we got our joint cutter out right now, cutting all the joints to the drains, and dividing up the slab in nice even sections, putting a lot of these joints in around uh, on all the crack points really. You can also see us working with a uh, a uh, funny trowel, smoothing out all the concrete, and we're actually now out on the knee boards, going over a major pass where this is like your really clean up stage when you can first get out on the sliders and start cleaning up the slabs, the joints, and giving it a really nice finish. Of course, we're going to be going over a couple times because. Since we're doing a sand wash finish, we need that surface really nice and smooth. So after a couple more pass, I think we did about three passes in total. This is their last pass. We're uh, just getting the pump spray ready. We're going to be using our, our top cast for the sand wash finish and it's uh, number three so it's not like the roughest exposed or the least amount of exposed it's uh, right in between it goes from one to five and you can see we're spilling the top cast all over the place really but I did get extra uh, five gallon buckets of this stuff just in case because it was a big slab so it's going to be eating up a lot of this uh, a lot of this top cast is going to be eating up when we spray it on <clears throat> also I do not recommend getting a Home Depot uh, hose sprayers because I just kept getting clogged up the, the top cast was just not going through this sprayer very well I should have had a couple backups just to be safe Either way, we still got the top cast on. And as long as that top cast was on all the, on all uh, areas of the concrete, we'd get a nice exposed finish. Also, you definitely want to uh, get this stuff off the very next day. You don't want to leave the top cast on because the longer it stays on, uh, the harder it is to get it off. So I end up coming back the next day to pressure wash all this top cast off. All right, here we are the next day after the pour. Got all the top casts on there. About to start washing off with our pressure washer. I'm gonna be here solo doing this, but I also got to get the other uh, half of the concrete pour ready, which is the lower half down here. And the front side walks out the front. So I'm gonna be here solo today, just handling this and washing this off. I'm excited to see what this looks like. Once we wash it all off. So I already did show you guys that pour that we did at the in the bottom. And that was actually part three. This is part four. So if you wanted to see that pour, just go ahead and check out uh, part three of this build series. But right now, 
all I'm going to be doing is pressure washing this whole entire patio, uh, making sure that all of the sand wash comes out nice and even. And this is a very tedious, delicate process because you want to make sure that you hit every square inch of that patio. Plus some of the top cast did get on the coping, so I had to spend a lot of time cleaning the coping of the pool. And it's okay if you get uh, overspray with the top cast. You can get it off the next day with a pressure washer. It just uh, takes a little bit of time. Pressure washing this whole patio alone though took me about, about four hours. This short little time lapse was about four hours of me pressure washing this patio. All right, and here is the final look of the sand wash finish. Uh, we just got wash, done washing everything down. You can see the exposed sand in the concrete. And overall, this job just came out really amazing. Got a beautiful sand wash finish. I also matched the coping of the pool really well. The sand wash, the color of the concrete and the coping were a little different, but the sand wash was damn near perfect. But anyways, that is it for this video. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Make sure to check out the next parts coming up uh, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you guys are all notified on our next upcoming videos. Alright, thanks for watching and have a great day.